Some people are always complaining about something. Some people are always put off by something. They're impatient about this. Okay, they can't stand that. They do not like this. They, if, some people are always upset over something, day in and day out. So they have an excess of cortisol in their system. And of course you rationalize it because you know, you've been taught to, that they're stressors. Look, I gave my all to that husband. And look at the way he's treating me. Running off with this other woman. That's the fact. It's what he's doing is wrong. But you don't have to be stressed about it. There's a, there's a system of training, okay, called real religion, that you that they should have shared with you and been shared with you. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay? To prevent you from, you know, that overproduction of cortisol. What does cortisol, that hormone, do in your body? Too much of it? Let's read the balance of all hormonal functions. It throws all your other hormones out of whack. Hypertension, a rhythm disordered heartbeats. Increased level of cholesterol and triglycerides, hence high risk for cardiovascular problems, strokes and heart attacks and da da da. Abnormal craving and appetite, excess weight gain, loss of muscle mass, loss of calcium due to osteoporosis, immune system imbalance, up or down. Okay, all those, you know, uh, autoimmune diseases and things of nature. Uh, uh, chronic inflammation, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and so forth, right? Um, you know, fibromyalgia, all those chronic inflammation that they can't find a cure for. Baloney. They can't find a cure for it because they told you you're only human, so they don't not check your anger, they don't check your words, they don't check your grief. You see that? You see that? And they don't check it because the doctors believe that anger is natural, it's human, it's normal to be angry. You understand that? That's the false doctrine that I've been feeding you. Uh, blood sugar imbalance, reduced libido, sexual performance. You know, highs are going to be more in the energy exchange, and then it goes to the high of sale. Next, uh, <laughs> for a tip of problems, no? Oh, sorry. Back. Back. Okay, for a tip of problems, PMS, menstrual problems, andropause, and menopause problems, anxiety syndrome. Negative mood, depression and sadness, increased tension to fearfulness, worry, lower IQ, decreased memory, decreased right brain and frontal lobe function, increased rate of loss of brain tissue, with the Alzheimer's disease, and so forth, accelerated aging, sleep disorders, etc. Et Google cortisol. C O R T I S O L. Life down, go home and Google it. You know, get a lot of stuff on it. And but then I'm gonna tell you that it comes from the emotions which are not normal and natural. All right? Next slide, please. We must include the mind in all therapeutic regimens, uh, okay? From what we said before uh, and about the double blind as well, right? Next slide. Now, you're familiar with, you know, Mind over matter healing, you know, mental approach to healing, psychotherapy, and psychosomatic medicine, but a lot of it is symptomatic and also specific, meaning that um, you go to a psychotherapy or a hypnotherapy and they might use you, they might, through hypnosis or psychotherapy to give you suggestions in a state of alter, state of consciousness, whatever, to help you, let's say, um, you know, eliminate pain. But it, it's not getting to the cause of the pain. You see that? Uh, this, the Russian school took people and put them in a trance, a hypnotic trance, and, and you know, once you're in that state of trance, you know, your mind creates a reality as real as physical reality. You see that? Okay? And they gave, they told the person the picture with glass, of uh, uh, water in front of them, and they made them uh, drink like 10 glasses of water. Of course, there's no water there. And trance, but to them, was real. And they brought them out of trance, and the person began to go to the bathroom like crazy. 
because they were convinced that they had drank a whole lot of water. You with me? Okay. And, uh, and many experiments like that, they were able to modulate and even heal people from diabetes. You see that? And so on. But this is symptomatic or specific. Okay? So I just want you to understand that, they are, that there are techniques of using the mind and the words for healing. Okay? Um, but you might say, well, why has it fully caught on? Let's find out why. The human self-image must be replaced by the divine self-image for psychotherapy to work because it says, okay, if I take you and I, you know, put you in trance, I'm a hypnotherapist or a psychotherapist, and I give you suggestions to eliminate this illness or the other, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't use this thing, right? Because there are people, you know, like for example, people with cancer, right? The pain is so severe that the, the doses of opium could actually kill the person. Or the pain itself, you know, can create such a strong emotion that the emotional, emotional response to the pain can kill the person, the stress itself, the witness. So you can help those people by eliminating the pain through hypnotherapy, psychotherapy. Is that right to you? But what happens is that if you are convinced that you are a human being, meaning that it's natural to indulge fear, anger, and so forth, you will keep putting the poison back into your system. You keep on doing the good work. Make sense? Okay, next slide. The two self images you have a human and a divine self image. The human is based on animal brains in control of the higher brain. Okay? Meaning that you accept emotions which are stressful reactions of the natural. Therefore, you lay the foundation for, you know, a stress in those illness. I am convinced, and I said the thought that uh, I'm human. I'm going to give in to something will happen, and I want to give the fear, anger, worry. See that? Okay? Now, you know, thousand years ago, the ancient Egyptians said, no, you, they, you know, uh, they're just reasoning backwards that, you know, no negative emotion could be natural to you because it damages you. So, your true self image is one that is the opposite of being emotional. It's the opposite of being controlled by emotions and sensuality. And once we put that together and we take a look at it, guess what you look like? You look like a divine being. You see that? All right? What does the Bible, which was written in 16 B.C. or so, copied from the ancient Egyptians, you know, text? says about, how does it start? And God said, let us make man in our own image, and man was made in the image and likeness of God. And later on, it says, you know, make not a greater image of God. So if man is made in the image of God, and God cannot make a graven image, that was not a graven image. That disappointed me so much because I thought that if God, you could have a graven image of God, then he must be a handsome man just like me. <laughs> Shucks. Okay. Squash that one. <laughs> I imagine God waking up one day and saying, I'm so stressed out. <laughs> I can't do this no more. <laughs> So if you're the image and likeness of God, God, you cannot be human. You have to be divine being. A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. If God is divine and you're the image and likeness of God, then you're what? A divine being. Hello? Help me if my logic went wrong somewhere, folks. You see that? And Go through the Bible here and there, and you're gonna find, you know, the Old Testament here and there. Know ye not that ye are gods? You go through the New Testament that here and there, you are told that you will perform those miracles yourself too, that you have that power of using the Spirit. You are gonna to be told that you gotta to put the old self away and put on the new self. What's the old self? The human. Now, I know that there are parts in the Bible that contradict itself, but 
Okay, but there are other texts from ancient Egypt that have no contradictions. It's very clear that man is a divine being. And they have, you know, mm. uh, the records of men and women who achieved the division. You see that? And all I'm simply saying to you is that the human self-image is wrong, it's harmful, mm -hmm. that's what gives us all the wars. Okay? I read of the spirit of the devil, I'd rather take the devil than Hitler in your days. I'd rather be on the devil than the people who enslaved a hundred million black people for slavery. Okay? I, what I want to say to you is that the human nature, you know, cannot be taught for evil. So I'm think about it. Okay? The devil ain't nothing but, you know, an animalistic man. That's why I portray the devil as a man with a goat's head and a tail. That's, you know, it's a joke that they play on the humanity. They will tell you you're not telling you. So if anger, fear, and so forth are distressful reactions, should you live an, emotion, an unemotional life? Absolutely not. You see, God allowed two emotions for you, and that is peace and joy. Those are the two only legitimate emotions. You don't need anything else. But anger is not working for you. Peace will. Joy will. You know what happiness is? Happiness is being peaceful when you don't have something and enjoying it when you have it and being peaceful when you can't have it and being joyful because you master the art of being peaceful. <laughs> so you're always joyful, and you're always peaceful. That's happiness. And the the the, the goal of ancient Egyptian spirituality is that you work at. I don't like this feeling. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna get this. You know, one of these walking sticks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to understand is that happiness is the most important thing in your life. That life. Okay? Happiness. But happiness is happiness is the state, is the proof of spiritual balance and spiritual power. When you are happy, you're in a state of balance and power of the spirit. Is that clear to you? And, but only a spiritual education program can make you happy. A woman can't make you happy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Man can't make you happy. You understand that? Money can't make you happy. So, you know, material accomplishments can't make you happy. You have to be happy first. The happiness <coughs> will give you the vitality and the equilibrium of mind and the power of the spirit to attract to yourself the things that you need for success and well-being in life. See, because happiness comes out of you fixing your attitude to life, to challenge the life. You have to know that it's natural to be at peace. Why? Because if you're not at peace, then you're angry, you're upset. You're fearful, you're worried, you're grieving. You have a choice. You have no, you can, you can be. You see, the, the human spirit is plastic. It can be whatever you want it to be. The human spirit can give any reaction that you program it to give. You see that? Okay, so why would you choose something that is harmful and destructive when there's an option to choose peace? And therefore, you know, the ability to be at to be joyful over the fact that you can be at peace. So what have you done? You have eliminated suffering from your life. Stress from your life. Is that right to you? I started. And this is established through you know, spiritual work. Okay? The Hindus call happiness nirvana, but they didn't understand nirvana because they thought nirvana is is what comes at the end of existence, at the end of spiritual work. No, in the ancient Egyptian system, we call nirvana or happiness protect, which is the first major accomplishment before you can start to live your life 
successfully. Because if this happiness or death is going to give you everything you need in life, not the other way around. <coughs> okay? So uh, the ancient Egyptian system is based on 11 spiritual laws that you must, you see, through meditation. Next slide, right? Through meditation, to change your database. Because you see, your human nature is a database of, of a whole bunch of ideas that pop up into your mind to tell you what's going on and who you are and how you must respond to this, what you should like and don't like and why, you know, rationalization. You must change that through deep meditation. You see that? Okay, on divine laws. And the, there are 11 such laws because there are 11 sacrifices of the spirit, which the Egyptians call the pot, Neferu, and has come into the world as the tree of life. Has been popularized as the tree of life. You see, the Kabbalah of the Jews is of that nature, but it is much older than Kabbalah. It's called the pot, Neferu. The Jews have one tree of life, the Egyptians have about four such trees, a thousand years older than Kabbalah. You see that? And um, so the thing is that you must change your self-image. Remember what I said about Lincoln students? They got, they began to see themselves as great learners, great students. You see that? So that began to, you know, make them feel good about themselves. Right? They were no longer stressed over getting bad grades and the thought of failing, which is depressing their brain and lowering the IQ. So once they began to do well and feel their nature, they began to heal the IQ range. You see that? So once you eliminate, you know, stress, meaning anger, fear, and so forth, your IQ will raise. Your healing power will raise. And things of that nature, you, you, you with me? So you, that's what you get from being peaceful. Okay, and you all know the human power of peace. You're looking for peace, aren't you? You're seeking peace, but you, see, you seek peace by running away from challenge. No, you have to, uh, uh, running into some fantasy world within you, no. Know, you have to learn, okay, certain meditation techniques. Unfortunately, of course, I cannot give that to you, okay? I've, you know, I, I wrote so far seven volumes. Okay, to teach these laws and the meditation and the techniques for doing this. You see that? The Medutia series and other books are written. So all I want you to understand is that there's a method out there, and the method for spiritual healing is not, you know, uh, to learn hypnotherapy or whatever to target a specific <laughs> symptom or a specific condition. Okay? Which you can do in some cases to remove a specific discomfort, but you know, removing a discomfort is not healing yourself. Healing yourself is when you have established equilibrium in your physiological functions. You see that? Your spiritual functions, your life force. A change called chi. And so when that is in balance, then everything now begins to work well. There's clarity of perception, there's, you know, positive emotions, there is physiological well-being, you begin to, you know, to, uh, you know, reverse your aging process, and things of that nature. You see that? Okay? So, uh, is that the last uh, slide? Yes. Okay. So, I just want you to understand, okay, Last but not least is that there is and has been a system of spiritual healing that has not been recognized because it was not presented as a healing system, it was presented as a system of global and total well-being. Thank you very much.